Hello, this is Bern, and on today's episode, I'm going to be dissecting exactly what it takes for a man to commit for life to a woman. So stick with me. Hello, this is Bern. Welcome to your great life to be.com, a space where I share with ambitious, conscious, heart centered, and successful women how you can create the relationship of your dreams and attract the kind of man you want without the need for gimmicks or manipulation or trickery or games and as a direct result of stepping into the most alive and the most feminine version of you. Now, this topic has been addressed in so many different angles and I've even addressed it in different angles. The, the angle of the communication, the chemistry, the polarity, and all those things. Today, I want to take a step back, show you behind the screens of the Wizard of Oz, if you want to call it that, and dissect the essence, the truth behind what it takes for a man to commit to life for life to you versus guys who can't commit to someone, not even for the short term. Now, as I said before, beyond the communication, beyond the chemistry, beyond the polarity, beyond the, the, the way he feels about himself when he's with you, beyond the an explosive sensuality that you could experience, beyond the sex, there is something that irrespective of a woman, a man can bring to the table that can determine if he can commit to someone for life or not. And I think that many times the approach is centered on the techniques or the strategies on how to get this person to take actions, but maybe that person is not the best fit to take those actions, or maybe that person will never take those actions, and it's a complete and utter waste of time. So here's the axiom, the, 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 the statement of truth that should be self-evident to the man who decides to commit to a woman for life, okay? This needs to be at the very minimum subconscious, but ideally at a conscious level, he needs to clarify that this is what he's going for. The axiom is this, meaning and depth are greater than, are better, are more important than pleasure. So hear me out before you throw a tomato at me. Pleasure is important. But if what you're going for is primarily pleasure, then you will not get to the kind of life you want. You will not get to the kind of results that you want. You will not create the type of relationship you want because it, it takes a lot more than that to sustain it for years and years and years. So if a man primarily understands that meaning and depth are more important than pleasure, he's going to understand that the commitment for life is not just a commitment to a woman, it's a commitment to a principle. It's a commitment to a life of service. It's the commitment to showing in good times and bad times and being the kind of man who can solve shit versus the kind of man who cowardly retreats and runs away from problems, right? It's, it's bigger than the commitment to a woman. It's the commitment to being the kind of man who does the right thing versus the thing that feels good to his dick in that moment. Not that there's anything wrong with sexual expression. It's just when sexual expression is the predominant force that allows him to connect to someone, there's not enough, there's not a strong enough foundation for that to grow and stand the test of time and the inevitable shit storms that will land your way in the process of creating a meaningful life with someone. The disappointment, the, the fear, the anxiety, because let me just spell it out to you what a man is saying when he commits to you for life. Same thing you're saying when you commit to him for life. It's no different, but I'm explaining it to you in the, the other way because that's you, you perceive it from your own perspective. A man committing to you for life is committing to growth, is committing to a life of service, as I said before. It's committing to truth, to breaking free from fears again and again and again, to solving problems in a way that, with a level of commitment that you wouldn't have if you weren't tied to someone through some type of contract. Um, spiritual, legal, and emotional. All three are important. All three kinds of contracts are important for this type of situation. What else? It's commitment to pain. It's commitment to discipline. It's commitment, it's commitment to suffering. Why? Because there is suffering in commitment. There is suffering in seeing the person in front of you uh, in, in some ways different from you and, and resolving it. It's the, there's a, the, the pain of the other. When the other is in pain, 
if you deeply love them, you'll feel the fucking pain. So it's a much higher level of virtue that you have to bring to the table to be able to say to a woman, I commit to you for life. A man who commits needs to bring to the table a specific understanding. The understanding that the main thing he's going for is not self-pleasure, but the expression of the gift that he has inside that will in turn create meaning, that will in turn create pleasure of a different kind than the momentary just for right now type. So why am I saying this to you? Because the big problem that I've seen in lots of women who are not getting the kind of commitment they want is that they are trying to turn a mule into a stallion. What does that mean? Well, a mule is an animal that primarily uh, carries things around and has certain virtues, but one of those is not winning races. A stallion is a horse that's been bred through hundreds of years to, to, to run and win races and to be a beautiful specimen that wins. So here's the thing. If you're attempting to get this guy who doesn't have that fundamental foundational principle of service and sacrifice as, as the steps that he walks on and you're trying to get that guy to commit, good luck with that because more likely than not, it's going to be a fleeting type of commitment. Now, another problem that I see in lots of women is they choose men primarily focused on chemistry. Am I saying that chemistry is not important? No, but it is not the most important thing in the relationship. I'm sorry to say that. Going against a lot of people who say that's the most powerful thing. It's a powerful thing and it needs to be there, but it's by far not the most important thing. Because if you primarily go for chemistry and your chemistry is wired, not necessarily the best way for you. You're committing yourself to a life of guys who will abandon you time and time again. If you are committed primarily to chemistry and you connect with a man who has the values and virtues I just spoke to you about, but doesn't have that playful uh, nature uh, to begin with or that player mentality that feels so confident and maybe so exciting for you, but it's not the right guy for you in the end. Like if the guy brings those things, but you're not necessarily recognizing the butterflies and the rainbows and the explosions of the heart, then you might say no to him and not allow that chemistry to grow. Now, am I saying that chemistry always grows? No, chemistry sometimes never grows. But sometimes, and I'd say more often than not, you don't allow the space for that man to show you enough to where chemistry could even develop because you have a different thing in mind. And the thing you have in mind, just like the guy who's going for self-pleasure, is maybe a va value or a virtue that may not be the best thing for you. So hopefully this topic of what makes a man commit also makes you understand and question what is it that you're committing to and what is it that you're bringing to the table and what is it that you want to give in the relationship and what is the price you must pay if you want to find the level of depth that I'm talking about in terms of perhaps letting go of some guys who are exciting but really shitty for you or give some guys a chance who may not seem like the most exciting specimens for you but if you get to know them might end up being the absolute most exciting thing in the long term even if they didn't show up that way at the beginning. And sometimes being able to let go of a guy who can't have either, right? If this is helpful, insightful to you, I'm going to ask you to do three things. Number one, click like on this video. Number two, and number three, on the first line of the description of this video, you'll find a link that will allow you to take a free masterclass I created that will show you how to enter the kind of relationship that I'm talking about in a very practical way. All you do is enter your name and email and you'll be directed to that page. Now, if you're listening to me right now, and you're saying, Bern, I love what you're saying to me right now. The type of man you describe right now is exactly the one that I'm looking for. I just have no idea how to bring it about. Then reach out for help. We might be a fit to work together. The second link on the description of this video will also have a way for you to fill out an application. I'll personally read each one of them. If I feel I can help you, my assistant will then reach out and schedule a time for us to connect. Thank you so much for connecting with me. And as always, I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life.